hit us, we had something to say about human history. Our population may have been in such a precarious position that only a few thousand of us may have been alive on the whole face of the earth at one point in time, that we almost went extinct, that some event was so catastrophic as to nearly cause our species to cease to exist completely. It is an astonishing revelation, but the key was to find out when and why it happened. Because mitochondrial DNA mutates at an average rate, these scientists believe, controversially, that they can narrow down the date of the bottleneck. Mutations in the mitochondria take place with clock-like regularity. So the number of mutations give us a clock, essentially, that we can use to approximately date the major event. In the case of a population bottleneck, we think that this would have occurred roughly 70 to 80,000 years ago, give or take some number of thousands of years. As for what caused this dramatic reduction in population, the geneticists had no idea. Henry Harpending began touring universities to talk about the bottleneck. He was invited by anthropologist Stanley Ambrose to give a lecture to his students. Well, Stanley is full of ideas. He's the kind of scientist that plucks things from all over and puts them together. I uh, sat in on the lecture, and he started talking about this human population bottleneck. And I thought, what could have caused it? And at that point, I broke out into a sweat. I went up to Henry and said, I've just read a paper, um, and it's on the top of my desk now, that uh, may have an explanation for why this population bottleneck occurred. I didn't read it till a week later. And when I read it, you know, it was like somebody kicking you in the face. There it was. The paper was about the super eruption of a volcano called Toba in Sumatra. This team of scientists believe the bottleneck occurred between 70 and 80,000 years ago, although this date is hotly debated. Toba erupted in the middle of this period, 74,000 years ago. If there really is a connection, this research has terrifying implications for a future Yellowstone eruption. It could well be of a similar size and ferocity to Toba. Like Toba, it would have a devastating impact, not just on the surrounding region, North America, but on the whole world. If Yellowstone goes off again, and it will, it'll be disastrous for the United States and eventually for the whole world. Volcanologists believe it would all start with the magma chamber becoming unstable. You'd start seeing bigger earthquakes. You may see parts of Yellowstone uplifting as magma intrudes and gets nearer and nearer the surface. And maybe an earthquake sends a rupture through the brittle layer. You've broken the lid of the pressure cooker. This would generate sheets of magma which will be probably rising up to 30, 40, 50 kilometers, sending gigantic amounts of debris into the atmosphere. Where we are right now would be gone. We would be instantly incinerated. Pyroclastic flows will cover that whole region, maybe kill tens of thousands of people in the surrounding area. You're getting a, a, an eruption which we can barely imagine. I mean, we've never seen this sort of thing you wouldn't be able to get within a thousand kilometers of it when it was going like this. The ash carried into the atmosphere and deposited over large areas of the United States, particularly over the Great Plains, would have devastating effects. The area that would be affected is, is the breadbasket of North America, in, in effect, and it produces an enormous amount of grain um, on a global scale, really. That's, that's, that's the problem, and uh, you would see nothing the harvest would vanish virtually overnight.
all basic economic activity would certainly be in, impacted by this, and let alone changes in the climate that could possibly be induced. The climatic effects globally from that eruption will be produced by the plume of material that goes up into the atmosphere. That'll spread worldwide and will have a cooling effect that will probably knock out the growing season on a global basis. We can't really overstate the effect of these huge eruptions. Civilization will start to creak at the seams in a sense. The fact that we haven't seen one in historic time or documented means the human race really is not attuned to these things because they're such a rare event. It's really not a question of if they'll go off, it's a question of when, because sooner or later, one of these large super eruptions will happen. And next week, at this time on BBC World, Horizon examines the mystery of the Miami Circle.